And uh, now, um, again, um, more of an idea, but uh, a fairly important idea um, than, than specific uses, although there's, there's some uh, historical uses here. Um, now, we go back to the code books, and I, I mentioned earlier uh, code books um, were uh, used as much for uh, saving money on, on telegram, telegraph messages as they were for uh, uh, keeping, you know, military or governmental secrets, although they were uh, used for keeping secrets. And, and uh, certainly um, the, uh, both sides in the First World War used code books extensively. Um, a number of um, parties in the Second World War used code books as well. Uh, and, you know, gone through that, you know, uh, uh, having, you know, phrase, entire phrases sometimes. Um, and uh, there were things that you could do in terms of the code books. Did you have a, a four uh, figure uh, code group? Did you have a five figure code group? Um, uh, how many uh, different groups would stand for the same? phrase or or meaning um and uh how would you use uh the the code books again you know all kinds of implementation details there um that uh go into uh the use of of code books um they they were not simple um and they were interesting to create uh and use and of course you know that you could only use them so long and and then they uh, started to uh, wear out their usefulness because people would start to pick away at them and, and start to obtain information about which groups uh, represented uh, what and, and that sort of thing. So, um, but then, as well as code books, there was book code. And book code was completely different. This uh, gets into the concept of what is called a running key so you would you would take a book um generally speaking the the key would be in two parts part one would be the book itself part two would be the uh page line and, and sometimes even word number where you would start the running key and then the running key would be uh you know if if you had the letter A, that would, you know, you would use the, the standard, you know, Caesar substitution cipher. Um, if you had, you know, a character that was the letter A, you would move two, one space down the alphabet. The letter B, you would move two spaces down the alphabet, that sort of thing. And each, you know, you would use each letter running through the text of the book. So this is a polyalphabetic cipher again. Um, you're not having a strictly one-to-one -one correspondence. And these, uh, this, this book code, you know, like, like I say, choice of book and where to start in the book uh, becomes, you know, a, a two-part key. This is starting to get into multi-factor authentication. Um, so, uh, this was used um, in the Second World War. Interesting book, Silk and Cyanide, um, that goes through it. Uh, sometimes there were actual books. Um, very often, uh, people would memorize poems. And, and then, uh, because they started to realize that, uh, you know, commonly known poems uh, would also be known by the enemy, um, they would make up their own nonsense poems. Uh, but again, you know, same thing, that you would use this text as a running key to generate a polyalphabetic substitution cipher. Uh, oh, and I, you know, I've just used the word cipher. Um, I should say, with regard to code here, um, we tend to use code, crypt, cipher um, interchangeably. And, you know, encode, encrypt, en, 
cipher um, all means the same thing. But we, we do have to be a little bit careful when we talk about code because there are these, you know, codes that are the code book type codes. There's the spy type codes, you know, the pen of my aunt is in the forest. Uh, yes, but the yellow peacock flies at noon, you know, and then you know that they're either from New York or they're spies. But um, the... Uh, uh, code is used in data representation. I suppose the code books are an example of that. Um, and code, of course, is, is also used in terms of uh, talking about uh, programming and development. So, um, you know, we, we do have to be possibly a little bit careful there, but generally they're used interchangeably. Anyways, um, yeah, uh, another one, um, duress code. Um, uh, having a, you know, what's the password? And, and, you know, there's the password that says, you know, yes, I am part of the group. And then there's a different password that means, okay, I'm part of the group, but somebody's got a pistol pointed at my back. So um, that is a, an interesting uh, uh, concept that... Uh, a lot of people seem to have forgotten. Um, anyways, um, now, with the running code, uh, running key, um, we get into uh, something close to a one-time pad. A one-time pad is random uh, data that can be used in this, in this running key way. And it is the only algorithm that is provably unbreakable uh, unless you have the key and the one time pad the name says it all you can use the the key once and then you throw it away um, the uh, Russians used a, a one time pad system uh, the Americans had a, a system called Venona, which was tracking all of the Russian traffic, and they realized that the Russians were reusing their pads. They would not destroy a sheet off the pad. When they do it, they would collect them all up, and then they would send them to a different office, and they would start using it. So when you use the, uh, the key more than once, people start to get uh, you know, able to break your encryption. So uh, that, that was, in fact, what happened. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, interesting, uh, stories about that. Um, but, uh, I said it's random data. Random is very, very important in encryption. Random is too important to be left to chance. Uh, and, uh, no less than John von Neumann said that anybody who thinks they have a way of algorithmically generating random numbers is living in a state of sin. Um, interestingly, um, uh, you know, we'll talk about uh, quantum uh, encryption, uh, quantum cryptography, um, which is not actually cryptography, it's key generation, but quantum devices now uh, also, interestingly, may be the first time that we have actual technical devices that can reliably and randomly generate random numbers that aren't biased. Um, as a matter of fact, we, they have a tunable bias. So if we have a, another system that is somewhat biased, we can actually add uh, a quantum device and, and sort of correct for that bias. So it's really, really interesting. Uh, uh, quantum is a, uh, an important uh, 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 aspect of future cryptography, but probably not in its current state. Um, when, oh yeah, um, we're, we're talking about block and, and stream ciphers uh, soon, and I should just say streaming um, here. Uh, streaming, you, you sort of use this um, uh, one-time pad type idea, or at least a running key uh, cipher to do a lot of the uh, stream ciphers. So, anyway, on with other things.